what is the implication? Of, we're not just third dimensional. We've already heard from the invisible man scenario that we can recognize a fourth dimension. What does this mean to us? This means that our universe is probably a soap bubble, a three dimensional soap bubble, floating in 11 dimensional hyperspace. That if we were to leave our universe to go to another universe, we would have to take a detour through the 11th dimension. Now, I think that at one point when the universe dies, this may be our only salvation. People ask me the question, well, your unified field theory, the theory of everything, is it going to give me better color TV? Will I get better cable reception? I'm, what is it in for numero uno? Okay. Well, I tell them that parts of the unified field theory do give you better color television. I mean, after all, where does color television come from? It comes from the unified field theory. Where does better, you know, TV reception come from? The unified field theory. But the ultimate use of the unified field theory is to one day leave our universe. You see, when a black hole forms, it's a hole. And everything falls into it. It's the ultimate Roche Motel. Stars fall in, they never fall out. But even kids tell, ask their father. They say, Daddy, Daddy, if everything falls into a black hole, where does it go? Well, there's one theory that says that where it goes is to a white hole at the other end of a black hole. So think of this soap bubble sprouting a baby soap bubble. That's a black hole. Matter falls into the black hole and sprouts out the other end to create a white hole. Now, our universe is probably a white hole. How would you know a white hole if you looked at it? First of all, it would be expanding. Things would be rushing out. And it'd be very cool as it cooled. And by golly, doesn't that look like our universe? Our universe is probably a white hole. Now, in six years' time, we may be able to prove this theory. In six years' time, NASA is going to launch LISA into orbit, laser interferometry, space antenna. It's the most advanced satellite system ever conceived of by the human mind. Three satellites orbiting the sun, connected by laser beams. Three million miles across, dwarfing the planet Earth. Think about this. A satellite system, a triangle, orbiting the sun, much, much bigger than the planet Earth. You could put the planet Earth as a dot inside this triangle. The shock wave from the Big Bang is still reverberating on our, our soap bubble. It'll detect gravity waves from the instant of creation. We're going to get baby pictures of the infant universe, a family album baby pictures. This satellite is so accurate that it should be able to see the umbilical cord. The umbilical cord perhaps connecting our baby universe to perhaps a parent universe. What it, we're at the Science and Consciousness Conference. What is the implication of this in terms of our own awakening into it, our own individual expanded consciousness say individual, I mean interconnectedness as well, but what does this mean to us? Several things. First of all, as I mentioned, only a type 3 civilization could fully utilize that's the power of the Planck energy. The Planck energy is the energy of a type 3 civilization. A type 3 civilization would be able to open gateways, open baby universes, create a baby universe in a laboratory. They would have the power of a god. That's what this whole sequence is building up to. So when I talk about type 0, type 1, type 2, type 3, if we don't blow ourselves up in this whole process of evolving from a type 0 civilization, eventually we'll become masters of space and time. That's one aspect. The other aspect is more practical. That is, where do we fit into the larger scheme of things? This theory, string theory, is a quantum theory. In fact, it is the ultimate quantum theory. And all quantum theories say that everything vibrates. Everything is made out of a wave. And because of that, these waves intertangle with each other. This is called entanglement. And entanglement means that our waves entangle with waves on the other side of the galaxy. Instantly, in fact. We are all connected via this invisible web Einstein at first didn't like this picture because if you were to move in one part of the universe, the other part of the universe will also respond to you faster than the speed of light. Einstein at first didn't like it, but it's been shown in the laboratory. 
This is the famous EPR experiment. It's been shown many times now that entanglement does in fact make possible uh, vibrations traveling faster than the speed of light. Now of course the information traveling at this faster than the speed of light is random information. You cannot send Morse code this way. You cannot send tomorrow's stock exchange this mm -hmm. way. But what it does mean is that we are all entangled. Our wave functions all entangle with other wave functions. And I should also point out in all fairness there is one unfinished aspect of the foundation of the quantum theory. The quantum theory is the most successful theory of all time, even more accurate than Newton's laws of gravity. It works in the atomic realm, but it's based on a foundation of sand. There's the famous cat problem. The cat problem is the most profound paradox in the history of the universe. At the present time, no one has a solution for the cat problem. What is that problem? This is the famous Schrodinger cat problem. Schrodinger was one of the founders of the quantum theory, a theory that's been tested to one part in 10 billion. You can predict the power, the, the behavior of atoms to incredible accuracy. That's why we have transistors. That's why we have the internet. That's why we have laser beams because of the quantum theory. However, the laser beam, transistors, the internet is based on a foundation of sand because Nobel laureates still argue over the cat problem. Let's say I put a cat in a box. And the question is, is the cat dead or alive? Well, you don't really know for sure until you look at the cat. Let's say the cat is connected to a gun, and the gun is connected to a Geiger counter, and the Geiger counter is connected to uranium. Well, to describe uranium, we have to write the wave function of uranium which is disintegrated, and uranium which hasn't disintegrated. 50% chance maybe that it'll disintegrate, 50% chance that it hasn't disintegrated. That's the quantum theory. You work in probabilities, right? The atomic bomb is based on this theory. The atomic bomb wouldn't work if the quantum theory were wrong. But now hook the uranium to a gun. Well, is the cat dead or alive? Well, you have to add the wave function of a dead cat and add it to the wave function of a live cat simultaneously. So the cat is neither dead nor alive. Now you may say to yourself, well, that's stupid. How can a cat be both dead or alive? Well, the only way to tell is to open the box. It's probability. And then the cat then collapses into a dead cat or a live cat. Well, that means that observation determined existence. So you're now left with a very horrible, absolutely incredible paradox. Either the act of observation determines the existence of a cat, or the cat is simultaneously dead and alive. Both alternatives are mind-blowing. Both alternatives shake philosophy to the very core. Let's take the first alternative. Observation determines existence. But observation requires consciousness. Therefore, consciousness makes an observation and then we see the cat is alive. Well, I determine the fact the cat is alive. Well, who determines me? 